And so how do you deal with some of the more boring aspects of your job? Because I'm sure there's boring times. No, no, actually there's no kind of boring job. Okay. Today is Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the office. I'm talking with you uh, while I'm in the office. I'm meeting room actually. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the office because it's more about I like this job. I love this job. This is my day, you know. Nice. I feel bad when I get sick because I don't go to work. I don't do my job. I don't open my laptop and look into code. I don't, you know, I don't get into someone's system. <laughs> I'm Eamon Elswa, and this is Getting Into InfoSec. My guest this week is Hassan Mohammed, aka Waisel. Hassan is my first international guest, so I'm really excited about that. He's also my youngest guest, so at 19, he got into computers and security really early on. And I wanted to understand how this game's work. Because of that, he's also faced some challenges getting work. Saying this didn't work because of my age and because of my education. I was only 18. Even though at 19, he's one of the youngest OSCEs in the world. Hassan likes to go deep onto subjects such as malware and reverse engineering. People just think when it's about assembly and reverse engineering, oh my God, this is untouchable. This is like, you know, too much low level stuff. No, I'm telling you there's much more lower levels than that. He even dreams in code. I stumbled onto Hassan when I was accepted for the B-Sides Istanbul conference. So he's also one of the organizers and the speaker as well. If you like the show, please share with your friends and let others know. They might thank you for it. If you have any questions or comments and like to get in touch, you can reach me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or email. Everything is at gettingintoinfosec.com. There you can sign up for my newsletter where you can get updates, tips, and other things going on with Getting Into Infosec. All right, on to the show. All right, Hassan, welcome to the show. You're welcome, man. So you're a 19-year-old security researcher in Istanbul, from what I understand. Is that right? Yeah, it's all right, but I'm not calling myself a security researcher. That's right. Yeah, as you mentioned before, I'm just 19 years old, you know. So I didn't reach this stage of my life that I can call myself a security researcher, but one day I will be. Yeah, that's one. Okay. My personal thought. Okay. So yeah, I noticed that your headline is quote unquote not a security researcher. Yeah. <laughs> and so let's talk about all the non security research you've done <laughs> over the past years. <laughs> about the career or employment or Well, let's start from the beginning. So let's talk about you know, some of the things you've done today. I have noticed are pretty active. You have a pretty good GitHub, a few articles on the medium. Yeah. And you have been employed in the security field. So maybe tell us about like some of the things you've done lately, and then we could talk about your past. Mm, thing is I've done lately, maybe it's a great achievement that I got is OSC. Mm -hmm. It's not really a big achievement for me, but we will counting it as a big one. So I took it like this. But it wasn't, you know, just a checkpoint for me. So it's a proof for my knowledge because as you told in the beginning, I'm just 19 years old. So no one would hire someone 19 years old into cybersecurity world. Yeah. So why is that? Why is that? Because of my age, because of, you know, there is a lot of limitations out there mm -hmm. for education and age problem. Also, you know, it's kind of a problem for companies, but not all of companies, you know. So for me, after OSC, I started getting a lot of job offers from around the world, actually. But I decided to stay in Turkey and focus on my study and continue my education. So I will attend electronic engineering program next year. I hope so. And once I finish, maybe I will focus on academic parts of my life. Mm, I see. So yeah, besides security research. Okay. And so you did work a little bit as a security analyst. Is that right? Yeah, I worked as a security analyst uh, for a business solution company. Mm -hmm. I was handling not only, you know, kind of security analysis for servers and so on. I was handling also application security parts because I love code. Okay. I love looking into code. I love write code and so on. Uh, so I'm kind of into application security, but there is a difference, of course, between application security term as, and bug hunting. You know, I'm not bug hunter or something like that. I would like, you know, white box approach more than black box one specifically in application security stuff. Mm -hmm. And were you doing like code reviews and things like that? Yeah, like code reviews and so on. Okay. Securing code and so on. Okay. And so you decided to 
hold off on your career to go back and study. Is that right? No, actually, I will continue both of them. It's kind of quite hard, but I don't have other choice. I will do it because I cannot stop my career. Okay. It's already started. Yes, you know, so I cannot just stop it. So I will continue. I know it's hard, but, you know, I hope everything going well. Okay. And tell us about your youth. It says you've been on the computer since you were four. So tell us about, you know, how you got into technology and then more specifically into hacking. Yeah. Since I was four, I just found myself like computers and so on. You know, I got my first computer since I was four. I didn't even remember that I was four and I was sitting in computer, but my mom <laughs> kept telling me that you was four and you was using the computer, you know? Yeah. My memories are right, right? Yeah, of course. I believe in that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Then it's just started with games, you know. And I wanted to understand how these games work. Then I got the idea about the code. There is a code running, you know, there's kind of zero and ones on this computer. And I really wanted to understand what is going on and what is going on. Why is this zeros and ones, you know? So I started learning, oh, there's something called code because I was like games and still actually, I'm kind of crazy gamer, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I started, you know, research about code and all of this stuff in school library and so on because I didn't have internet, okay, in Egypt. Oh, okay. And this, you know, early age. Mm -hmm. So I got internet when I was 10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, my entry point. But I spent like two years, like middle school time, you know, just downloading games and play games and so on. Then I realized that I need to back to my right path, which is code. Okay. So I started learning code and I was preparing myself to be, you know, a computer hacker, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that. What got you interested in hacking? Did you see movies? What was it that got you interested in hacking? Just movies about hacking, you know. Hackers movie and so on. Everything related to computers, actually, not just hacking. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Yeah. Then I started learning code. I started with web language. I didn't start with C or something like that, but I just started with simple front end languages. Then I go through back end language like PHP. Actually, at this moment, I wasn't know any kind of this term like there's front end or back end. I just was learning uh -huh. what's this. So, how is this going to work, you know? And uh, even I developed a project for my school, a really simple project using PHP and HTML. They liked it, but no one cares, actually. Oh, okay. Was it part of a computer science class or just Yeah, like... yeah, it was just computer science class in high school. Okay. So, you know, in high school, I was already, you know, PHP and Python mm -hmm. as back-end language and not really good knowledge about them, but I was more interested in Python. Besides that, I was already started hacking, you know. Let's just be clear, you know, kids always play. And no one in InfoSec doesn't play a little bit all times and so on. Right. So I played a bit around web hacking and maybe pop up some shells and so on, you know. That's it. Then after high school, I decided that I have to take a decision on my career and I have to start my career. Mm. Since, you know, last year in high school, I was already know about web security. Plus, I was know a little more about programming mm -hmm. for web specifically. Then I decided it's okay. I have to start something right now. Okay. So I decided, you know, move along first. Then I have clear minds and start studying more and more and more. You decided to move alone? Yeah, that's right, move out. Okay. So I decided to move to Istanbul because I came here when I was a kid, I remember, and I was like, oh, this place is really good. I wish I would live here because mm -hmm. people living here are so lucky in this place. You know, it's a good place and so on. Mm -hmm. It was just a small trip, you know. So I just I like the place and I was scared. So And did you have money? I mean you just finished high school. Like did you just took some cash and went? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I already handled on this period a freelance project. Okay. One of them was a nutrition test project. Okay. So you were already doing some freelance work when you were in Egypt? Freelance work, yeah. Oh nice. Okay. And before getting into Penetration testing projects, I was into web development projects. So oh, I see. that make a really good money for me. I see. And I was, you know, just living with my parents, so I didn't spend too much, so I will have too much money. Okay. Yeah, then I started doing, you know, some pen test projects for small clients and so on, you know. So I got the money required and I told myself, oh, it's okay, I can start now. 
So when I moved to Istanbul, I was having you no know, amount of money. So if like really good time to learn something and chill out, you know. Mm -hmm. But I decided I don't want to chill out. I want to learn something. I want to start my career. So I started looking for a job or something like that. And actually, somehow I have been dropped in interview on really international big company. Mm. Okay. However, then I got into this interview, you know, it was like technical interview was great and the guys into the interview liked me so much and so on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, thing is didn't work because of my age and because of my education. I was only 18. Okay. So what did they say? So they liked you, but they... Yeah, but we cannot just hire you right now. You can go to university or something like that and we can come back again and we will hire you as intern or something like that. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I told them it's okay. It was a really bad day for me, actually. But mm. I found, you know, a startup and business solution. Then I started working for them as a security analyst. I always care about securing servers and so on. Mm -hmm. I was working, you know, also on application security. So I was working with system administrators and IT guys, as well as I was working with development team. You know, so I was handling tasks between both of those teams, but I got really huge experience from this company because as I told you, I was working in two different levels. Mm -hmm. I improved my development skills too much. You improved your what skills? Your document skills? No, no, my development skills, coding skills. Oh, development skills. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, you know, too much information about a lot of stuff. And since, you know, I already know about, I know Python, for example, I learned it batch on this company, got some batch skills mm -hmm. as well, PowerShell and so on. So I was automating my tasks and so on. So I got kind of free time to improve myself more and more and doing some research. Okay, nice. So I decided to get into exploitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Since I was, you know, know some C and C++ and so on. I learned it in not from too much time ago, but... I just quick pass on them so I can understand most of C and C++ code. It's not a big deal, you know. Since you are into programming and code, you can understand any syntax in this world. Because the logic is the same in you know, every language. So it wasn't a big deal. Right. So I decided to get into, you know, C and C++ code reviews and I handled some... Do you ever dream in code? Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Because you've been coding so young, you know, do you actually dream in code? Like, do you solve coding problems while you're sleeping? Yeah, actually, I don't know how did you know that, but it's happened for me once. <laughs> and let me tell you about something. It's really weird, you know. Uh -huh. I was sleeping and I dreamed like something like that, you know. I just wake up and opening my laptop and running by a shark, then I slipped. That's it. Okay. So I thought that I can capture the dream using Wireshark or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was really weird, you know. When I wake up in the morning, I told myself, what the heck I did? Why are I opening Wireshark? Why are I sleeping? <laughs> then I remembered, you know. Yeah, I dreamed with code, but not solving problem. No? Okay. I dreamed like I'm writing zero days and all of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's only your dreams. Okay. Yeah. One one day, actually, I dreamed like was web exploits, and next day it was real exist because I was reviewing this application. Okay, but you know, I just passed at this point for a letter check. When I go home and slept, I dreamed about next day. Oh, it exists. It's executable. Oh. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I mean, the subconscious is really powerful. So. Yeah, and also dreams. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't underestimate. Okay, cool. And now a message from our sponsor. Did you ever want to do a red team on your company, but not want to deal with hiring people, external or internal? We have a solution for you. Red Team Spray Paint. Simply spray our infrared invisible paint on your targets. Spray it on your entrances, server rooms, and buildings. Our solution is non-toxic and is safe to be sprayed on people, especially executives. Red Team Spray Paint. Stay tuned for our next version, where all you have to do is just spray your company's logo and we do the rest. So now you're consulting, you're learning more about development, you're trying to do more exploit development, correct, right? I think you recently got the OSCE, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. I don't have too much experience in exploitation, but I can tell you that I learned too much about exploitation. I got into more and more low-level details. Right now I can read assembly like normal code, you know? Mm. So I can imagine 
how code patterns and how execution flow work, you know, okay. like if statements and for loops and so on. And this is coming from, you know, reading too much assembly code. So people just think when it's about assembly and reverse engineering, oh my God, this is untouchable. This is like, you know, too much low level stuff. No, I'm telling you there's much more lower level than that. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, I just like assembly and low level exploitation. I felt like this is real security. This is how you can make an impact in systems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cannot just go through a system from web apps. You have to, you know, exploiting service and so on. Mm-hmm. And what are your interests? Like, so now you're in between jobs or I guess, you know, you're just doing some freelancing. What's your ideal next step? Currently, I'm working like in two, two jobs. Okay. For now, I'm working like full time in education related company in Istanbul. Okay. It's one of the biggest companies for education solutions in Istanbul. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of handling most of universities in Turkey uh, security. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Plenty of security need there. Yeah. Uh, also into application security, uh, which means, you know, more code and more code review. Mm-hmm. Even writing some code. It's a small company, but I like it because they kind of helped me to get me into my academic education path. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Other company, which is Side Struggle, it's a training company. Mm-hmm. They are Turkish company, mm-hmm. but recently uh, they you know started their startup in Acetonia, and you know this guy is really skilled technically and so on. I joined them recently mm-hmm. as lab developers, so I'm developing labs for offensive security labs, vulnerable machines, and so on. And, you know, they are going to start kind of new trainings on they what, you know, changes the game on training field in cybersecurity. I hope so. Mm. So I am working also with them. So that's my current employment status. But I don't write all of this, you know, like DN or CV or whatever, because right. it doesn't matter, right? Huh? And what's your favorite part of security? Exploit development, malware analysis, pen testing? Yeah, malware analysis. Yeah, I didn't mention about malware analysis. You know, I'm into malware analysis also. Mm-hmm. It's like one of my daily jobs because I'm receiving malwares from, as I told you, universities and so on. Even, you know, some Linux malwares affected Linux servers, starting to analysis it and so on. Mm. So I like really malware analysis stuff. Okay going through binaries and so on. Nice. To be specifically and be clear, I improved my assembly skills, okay, and better understanding of assembly code and reverse engineering uh, from malware analysis, not from exploitation. Mm. Then why when I, I got into exploitation, it was kind of pretty easy. I know I know assembly, of course. I already have some information. Then, you know, I started to study code patterns of bugs and so on, like, use of free and all of this cool stuff. Okay. So how did you find your freelance gigs often earlier in your career? Yeah, it's about, you know, I got some connections. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I started freelance locally. Then I started globally like, okay, I will be clear for you. I was making tons of accounts on Upwork and freelance and, <laughs> you know, running some boots. Okay. I will talk clearly, you know, it's okay. So I was running kind of boots and collecting jobs. That's it. <laughs> Nice. Okay. But Upwork and freelance websites just stop at this stuff right now. Okay. Also, I don't work like this kind of freelance stuff anymore because I already have like one full-time job as well have part-time job with cyber struggle. And- yeah. But for those out there looking to start their career, sometimes freelance is a good way to start. So Yeah, of course. Also to gaining some knowledge, some challenges. Mm-hmm. But when it's about hacking and security... I got into freelance because no too much programming and so on. Mm-hmm. But when it's about security and so on, people looking for bug hunting and so on. Okay. Yeah. And with bug hunting specifically, like hacker one, bug crowd and so on. Do you participate in bug bounties? I didn't get into bug bounties. Okay. I'm doing security research, but I'm not the bad guy here. But when I found a bug and it's not kind of valuable, you know, because people keep reporting really silly issues as security issues. Mm. And I cannot understand why companies pay for this, <laughs> re- like missing great limits. What is the impact of res- missing great limits? You know, what is the security impact? It's okay. It's kind of resources impact. Okay. 
like you're sending emails, maybe user information. Yeah, this is kind of like what affects the business itself. But what is the security impact from like you have a platform with 10K users maximum? Okay, let's imagine that there is an endpoint somewhere and you have like missing rate limits on login. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's maybe a little bit security impact, but this doesn't serve, you know, that much point you just give it to security research as well, putting him on how form, you know, because these people keep, you know, I know us like, I have like more than 100 half form and so on. And this comes from missing security headers and really not even security bugs, you know. So that's why I'm not into bug pointies, but I'm doing security research. I have some bugs, you know, and I'm just dealing with companies directly. So if I got a project, okay, mm-hmm. that's my project and just my bugs. So I don't have to get into bug points since also I don't have time for bug points. Okay. It's good money, of course, but unfortunately I don't have time for bug points. Okay. And so how do you deal with some of the more boring aspects of your job? Because I'm sure there's boring times. No, no, actually there is no kind of boring job. Okay. Today is Saturday. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the office. I'm talking with you. Uh, while I'm in the office, I'm meeting room actually, mm-hmm. and I'm in the office because it's more about I like this job, I love this job. This is my day, you know. Nice. I feel bad when I get sick because I don't go to work, I don't do my job, I don't open my laptop and looking too cool. I don't, you know, I don't getting into someone's system. <laughs> For example, <laughs> you know, so as I told you, I was in computer since I was four. Yeah. When, you know, I'm far from my computer, like for two or three days, maybe I will be depressed or something like that. Wow. Have withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, really. <laughs> this is my life, man. Nice. I love this. That's awesome. So what is some advice you'd have for others trying to get into the field? Yeah, it's depending actually on you. the one who want to get into the field, like, or you can really do it because it's all about you. It's all about your study. It's all about your research. It's all about your time. So there is nothing called, I will get into information security and I will start studying some courses and then I will become an information security expert. This is the reality of outside, you know. So you have, you know, to document yourself. And I prefer you and suggest people who want to start starting from low level stuff because if you want to break something, you need, you know, to understand how it's work first so you can crack it better. Not even just to understand how it's work, but build one, build your own and crack it and so on. That's about security field. You cannot just getting into security field with just silly courses and this kind of courses, you know, online offers and so on. But also it's required, you know, attending some conferences and training as well. Right. You know, you have to do it yeah, somehow. But this is not all you can do for getting into cybersecurity. Okay. I'm talking about university students, for example. Oh, for students, uh-huh. As well high school students. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't have too much time to make kind of a study for cybersecurity and so on. But you can make it like part of your day, you know. For example, I was working too far place, which place I was living in. It's like two hours by bus. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I got like four hours per day. Ah, okay. So I decided to use this time by reading books and so on. And I got really huge knowledge from that time, you know, because this time is already you are spending it in your day. So it's been that in something useful in your life because you will just need this somehow or someday or whatever. Getting so much information and knowledge, not bad thing at all. You can just improve yourself and read books. Yeah. Not just read books or watching videos. As I told you, you have to build it, then understand it, then crack it. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So do you have any interesting war stories from your time? Any interesting that you can share with us? Actually, you know, I have, you know, like weird dream story. (laughs) You can take it as a story, you know. (laughs) Okay. But like any stories from your work experience where you've encountered a hack that someone hacked in? Yeah, yeah, I I will let you once. I was, you know, we was in penetration testing project for one of our clients, Mm -hmm. an old company. We didn't receive too much, you know, penetration testing project. It was like projects from our clients only. 
Uh, they are already clients on our company. We are mm-hmm. offering them penetration testing and so on. I see. So if they accepted, yeah. However, I was into penetration testing project and I was working alone with this project, really. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any kind of a teaming activity or something like that. It was like biomedical assessment, you know, and exploitation, that's it. And you do it, you're a nice report. But, you know, we was like kind of late on deadline of this project. Okay. So I told my manager, it's okay. My project manager, it's okay. I will deliver the report on Monday. So I delivered. <laughs> and, you know, somehow I delivered this report with, you know, during the engagement and contract, they allowed us, if you get into a resource or to the organization, you can do whatever you want without affecting employees or company data. Okay. So we don't want to lose any data. Then it was okay, you know. Mm-hmm. So I chose Monday because, you know, I wanted to send them the new domain controller password <laughs> as a reward. Oh. <laughs> really, I know this is not common in two penetration testing scenarios, of course. And not kind of, you know, penetration testing engagement will allow some kind of stuff. But I just did it for fun, you know. <laughs> How did you get it? It's a long story, you know, it's just escalating from box to other bands and so on. It was like small organizations that would have like one domain controller, two file servers, but too much endpoints. Mm-hmm. What was your first foothold? How did you first get in? Well, it was, you know, a really old WordPress instance. Ah. Uh, there was like running blog, not even a blog, you know, it's like internal blog for them, but okay. it was exposed to the internet. I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of, if you want to classify as exploitation type, mm-hmm. first limited shell or uh, broken authentication. Okay. And they was like hosting this WordPress on Windows Server. So, oh, boy. yeah, I'm on DMZ from outside. So it was really great, actually. <laughs> this is one of easiest pen test projects I did, but this is not even pen test project, actually. You know, just for fun, you know. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Good. So you have an upcoming B-Sides talk. Yeah, about B-Sides, yeah. Yeah, B-Sides Istanbul. Anything you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, B-Sides Istanbul going to be one of the biggest conferences on the area, you know, because we have like kind of hacking villages and so on. By the way, I'm one of organizing team for B-Sides Istanbul. Okay. As well, you know, uh, this guy is doing really great work. Okay, uh, by the way, they are starting rescheduling the conference to October. Right. And, you know, there is a lot of heavy stuff we are preparing for, like car hacking and IoT, SCADA systems hacking, and so on. We have a lot of workshops, we have a lot of trainings, and, you know, it's going to be really one of the biggest information security conferences in the area. I believe in that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah, I believe that's what going on. You know, burning something new to the area Mm -hmm. yeah looking forward to it and then you're giving a talk as well yeah i'm giving a talk about a small research about ibc exploitation windows operating systems Mm -hmm. like how you can you know discover some kind of ibc issues on applications and even you know i will release some tools as well and there is another friend talking about uh, automation and bug bounty i also you know i will share some scripts with him, you know, release some tools and so on. But my main talk is about IBC exploitation and I will release some exploit templates and, you know, make people focus more on IBC and all of this stuff in Windows operating system because uh, you may find an IBC bug on one of Windows executables, mm-hmm. default Windows executables to be specific. And you would gain zero day in Windows operating system, like good execution from zero. Hmm. So it sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, that sounds exciting. That sounds really exciting. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, Sam, thank you for your time, especially on a Saturday. You're welcome. And yeah, look forward to meeting in person at B Sides Istanbul. Yeah, I, I will see you soon. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the show. Links will be in the show notes. If you have any questions or comments on the show, you can reach me on Twitter at Coffee with Eamon. You can also email me at Eamon at gettingintoinfosec.com. Intro music brought to you by Trash80, trash80.com, licensed under Creative Commons. Every week, I let my guests pick their outro music. And this week, it's Week Night by Devin Church. See you next time.